but Jakucha 228, Bison, Stone Cold, and the Tolls. Uh, so I've been having a seven day no media blackout and I very much enjoyed it. I'm going to do it again. Uh, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. I'm trying to keep this channel non political and it's getting harder and harder for YouTube in general. But what did I actually do this week? Some random stuff. Uh, I just for some reason started drawing some kind of throwaway meme fan art of bison you probably can't read the writing tony the tiger says i'm great yep that's the level <laughs> um i don't know i just started scribbling this thing with the mechanical pencil and i'm just like what we're going to do is we're going to build it up we're going to just try and focus on his anatomy um i feel like from last week doing those kind of poses that I've got a better sense of drawing people from head to toes so that's what I was going to do here uh, and just try and make him seem like he's there so ultimately this is the pose I ended up with it feels a little bit like I mean he feels balanced but I feel like there's still something a little bit off I did a lot of resizing and uh, moving things around using the transform tools but everything kind of felt like it didn't quite stick also, there's an Optimus Prime joke in the corner, but don't worry about that. Uh, while I was kind of doing my iterative improving of the, the line work, um, for some reason I've given him this really upturned nose. He reminds me of one of those guys from that BBC comedy from quite a few years back. Uh, Royston Gracie, Royston Valley or something. I can't remember what the show is actually called, but it was weird, very dark. Um I think I might have actually come to a, a conclusion with what to do when it comes to giving Bison a cape. Uh, his collar, where his cape goes, his shoulder pads, the things that I should know how to draw at this point, but really don't. Uh, but what I'm definitely not comfortable drawing are his boots. And I think M. Bison has the coolest boots, period. Asterisk. I'm sure there's an exception, but yeah, so... At this point, I'm kind of tightening up the line work with the intention of, you know, still having fun, still being spontaneous. I get it to this point and now I'm like, OK, I feel like this is where now's the time to start looking at reference. I've had my fun, uh, mostly focusing on Bison's face and just the overall strength of the pose, which I think is kind of weakened from uh, the foundation to here. But, you know, I'll come back to it when I come back to it. Something that was very awkward for me this week. Um, when I airbrush, I never really get my grey values right. I'm, I'm always making things way too dark. So I just grabbed a, a photo. I was going to use a random face, but everyone just uses random faces of pretty girls. So I was like, fuck that. Let's draw Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, so um, I just used the value checker um, that Clip Studio Paint has just to see like a various points on the image what is the actual value you know it's super bright uh, uh, you know when you've got the light from the back but like what is the color of the shirt what is the color of his skin and then I just decided I was gonna like color pick the color or the value and then draw it on top of the photograph because uh, you know the line work here is traced because all I'm worried about is making the grayscale shapes work uh, but it was too convoluted. So what I did is I just gave up on this and I just eyeballed it. I know you shouldn't eyeball Stone Cold Steve Austin, but I did. Uh, and I just by hand kind of just drew the darks, drew the lights to get a, uh, a likeness. And then I was just messing around with the opacity uh, and trying to not shit the bed, so to speak. And um, putting him on a black background because that changes the way that I've used the grayscale values was a good idea and I feel like while I haven't put any great amount of effort into like rendering his brow or his mouth or even most of his face uh, my value picks are okay and I can do it and the point was just to prove that I can do it uh, I have gone back to my Udemy stuff I got from Steve Harris uh, I got a, a digital coloring course off him as, as well as a character creation one and he breaks down how to light uh, images once you've drawn them and he's going through it stage by stage telling me things I already knew and so much more than I ever learned on my bloody illustration degree um, and it's you know I, I made these notes to just remind myself that the best way to approach this is to do it in order have the process use the process 
and what was I going to do to use it? Well, I was going to draw a little uh, icon face of Raphael from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But I draw Raphael's face, I decide I want to draw the, the other turtles in the background, and then I end up drawing a background, and it's turned into a whole thing. So I was supposed to, by the end of this week, be colouring uh, this picture of Raphael, but I ended up spending more time worrying about things like Leonardo's swords and what the handle of a, of a katana looks like. And then it turns out, actually, Leonardo he hasn't... He doesn't use katanas like this. He His swords are rendered in a different way. So I kind of thought, in keeping with giving Leonardo Leonardo swords that I would draw his swords in that way and it seemed like a good opportunity to actually do something else from last week which was like use one of the special rulers try to use the symmetry ruler and see if I could um, actually split up the hard work in half we'll see how that goes when I when I finish rendering you know everything else uh, that's for a higher level rendition so, um, you know, Michelangelo's in the back, and now I decide he should have pizza. Donatello's back in the back in the back, um, carrying all kinds of stuff that I now have to figure out what he's carrying. And ultimately, this is the image that I'm going to clean up, and then I'm going to color it, and then we're going to see if it looks... I don't know how realistic I want it to be. I'm not worried about textures or anything, but what I really want is for the values to feel like they've been picked correctly, uh, with with intelligence and that they've been treated with the time and the effort and the patience that it deserves for me to get an uh, image of the turtles that kind of represents you know that 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 feel good nostalgia vibe I get from the original. Let's call them the G1 turtles, even though actually the cartoon turtles are nothing like the real turtles from the cartoon. But whatever. That brings us to the end of Petra Kucha 228. And you will see me colour this next week in a rare example of me actually following through with something. So you can look forward to that.